Hi, my friends, Joy here. I'm having a hard time getting the zero out of the TV and out of the window. So just ignore the zero, okay? There is not a bright white fluorescent light in a circle out there in the trees, I promise you. And it's not a spaceship. So here I am and it's October 9th, but I didn't get October 8 done. So how about we do October 8 and 9 today, huh? Alrighty, October 8, Influential Living. Matthew 18, 7. Woe to the world because of the things that cause people to stumble. Such things must come, but woe to the person through whom they come. Yeah, I'm so glad Jesus said that. Woe to those people. Oh, do you know any people I want to say woe to? Jesus said woe to you, woe to you, woe to you, woe to you. Oh, so many. When you open a brand new loaf of bread and find that the first piece is moldy, you may flip through and find that several more slices have been affected by that mold. It spreads its influence. In much the same way, people spread their influence to others and sometimes lead people into sin. Jesus' words encourage you to think about the influence you have on those around you. Influence people toward Jesus, not away from him. Very good advice. Very good advice. I have a real, real problem with some people in my life they say the meanest things and misunderstand everything i do and say and it hurts so much and you just want to hurt back you just want to hurt back but you can't do that you can't do that you can totally separate yourself from someone who's constantly hurting you jerry said he just got into matthew the other day and he said do you know what it says in matthew about knowing Jesus and choosing Jesus and how it's going to separate you from your loved ones. Yeah, I said, oh my gosh, does it really say that? Okay, so let's get on to a happier subject. <laughs> I'm talking about a lot of people I know who have major, major issues with loved ones, including myself, but not just me, I know so many and they tell me how hurtful and how painful and how much they've tried to fix it and how much the more they try to fix it the worse it gets and so at some point you just have to cut loose my friends you just have to cut loose and you have to go on with your life without those hurtful people in it that's my thinking on it at the moment okay all right, never alone, never alone. This is today, October 9, Matthew 18, 14. In the same way, your Father in heaven is not willing that any of these little ones should perish. Children didn't have much place in the hierarchy of society in Jesus' day. We don't have any place this day. They murder them right and left by the millions in the womb. They have no place, they have nothing. Oh, woe to those people. Major woe to those people we're backing up to yesterday. <laughs> but in this instance, Jesus pulled a small child into the room and explained that just as the shepherd would leave 99 sheep on a hillside to go and find one sheep that had wandered away, God desires for all his children to stay close to him. He pays attention to you and to where you are in your journey of knowing him. So you can know that you aren't alone and he has not turned away. He cares a lot. It is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Okay, well, sometimes I wonder why God isn't doing something. Why isn't he doing something? 
about the evil, the awful, awful evil, the disrespect, the hate, the uh, the murder, the downright murder of innocent blood. You know, people always say God is love, God is love, God is love. Well, I'll tell you what, the Bible says God can hate too. It says it. One of these days I'll look it up and tell you where it is. I think we may have already looked at it in this devotion book. But the Bible says God hates, not just this, he hates a lot of stuff. But God hates hands that shed innocent blood. And I'm like, oh, Father, 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 why can't you just strike those doctors dead? Why can't you just strike those evil people dead? <laughs> I know. It's a good thing I don't have any more power than I have being a Christian and knowing God and knowing that words have um, the ability to change things uh, because some of the things that come out of my mouth, people just be dropping dead all over the place. <laughs> God has a different way, doesn't he? He has a different way of thinking. He has a different way of changing things. And not only that, he told us in the Bible, all these things that are happening are going to happen. God isn't up in heaven going, oh, I forgot to write about that. Oh, no, look what's happening now, Jesus. I forgot to put that in the book. Mm -mm. It's in there. It's all in there. And I just kept thinking my whole life that it was going to happen way, way, way in the future somewhere. And it would never affect me. Boy, was I ever wrong about that. So, I just hope and pray that... God has a plan to get the Christians off this planet soon before it gets any worse. And it will get worse because the Bible says so. Oh, it says they're going to be cutting off the heads of Christians, huh? Yeah, it says that in there. Mm. Okay, I need to get back to quilting. <laughs> Something happy. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. We have to not let Satan steal our joy. We can't let Satan steal our joy because Jesus inhabits the praises of his people and he loves a cheerful giver and he talks about joy and how strength is in the joy of the Lord and we can't let Satan steal our joy. And we have to most of all remember, and somebody remind me, will you, about 500 times a day, <laughs> we win in the end. We have our foot on Satan's head. He is under our feet. He has no right to harm us in any way and we can't really control what other people allow him to do but we can't let him steal our joy we must pray we must believe we must trust i have to go i've got a quilt on the long arm over at the house and i've got to get back over there love you all jerry and i will be back tomorrow